How's it going, Ape? Sorry to uh, bum you out with this picture, but um, unfortunately, this lecture is dealing with oil pollution, especially in, in our waterways and mostly in our oceans. So, what we're going to look at, we're going to look at two things. Is one, where does the uh, where does this oil pollution come from? What are the sources of how these this oil ends up in our waterways? And then we're going to look at some current ways that we're trying to uh, how we can clean up the spills when and if they do occur. So the first thing before we go, let's look at how these affect organisms. So unfortunately, these are highly toxic essentially to all living things and even microorganisms. So the reason why we kind of focus or italicize microorganisms here, and to the right you have a food, a marine food chain and even a marine food web. And going back, notice the base of the marine food web are microorganisms. So when you have an oil spill in a certain area and the microorganisms, and in this case the base of the food web is affected, it trickles all the way up to the um, higher up in the trophic level. So maybe this shark here wasn't necessarily near the oil spill or swims in water where the oil is, the base of the food chain, the microorganisms are affected and will trickle up the entire chain. So that's what's unfortunate in regards to these oil spills. So, and also not only looking at how toxic it is to essentially all living things, yes, you have your oil spill, that's horrible, but then all these other factors come into play. Winds and currents can just bring the oil ashore if it was spilled off, offshore. Um, vapors are just toxic to anyone or anything that is in the area and even um, oil itself the how dark it is remember the albedo so uh, oil has a low albedo it absorbs sunlight so now you have an increased temperatures so again it's the event itself the spill is horrible but then you have all these events that trickle down which is makes it even more difficult to not only clean up but for an ecosystem to recover so where are these sources of pollution coming from? The first one is these offshore drilling platforms. And looking at the numbers there, there are quite a few off the coast of North America. If we look off um, just in the Gulf Coast alone, here you, you can see we have Texas all the way over to the uh, panhandle of Florida. But the whole coastline is littered with these, uh, these platforms, offshore fields platforms. And here you can see down here is California. California has a lot less. They have a lot stricter rules in regards to opening platforms and things of that nature. But again, um, these things also experience leaks. And we're looking at probably just North America alone, 322,000 pounds of year just from them leaking. And if you want to get even, not to bum you out even more, um, the U.S. has pretty high standards standards in regards to OSHA and um, keeping these uh, platforms up to date and things like that. They have higher restrictions for the environment and unfortunately worldwide it's not that case. So uh, something to think about. We don't know really what's going on in the other 3,000 that are worldwide and how much is being leaked. And we wouldn't be able to move on without talking about what's going on in the future. So we'll keep you up to date with our current image administration as of February 2018. You can see that we have these red areas are federally protected. These are marine sanctuaries. So maybe if you've been in Northern California, you've been seeing those. Um, but what we're seeing now is you now we're starting to, they're opened up um, even more uh, ocean water off the coast to um, drill more for to drill more oil. And, you know, usually that leads to more occurrence of Occurrences of leaks as well. So another thing to talk about platforms, you won't be able to talk about that unless we bring up the deep water horizon. This occurred in April of 2010. And what happened was is we had this pipe break on the ocean floor and it was about a mile below the surface of the ocean. So from the time of this explosion, they could not seal it. This happened in April. They could not seal the pipe until August. So the, they think it was about 780 million liters or in this case, 206 million gallons of oil just spilled into the Gulf. So if we look back into this, that's the reason why this is pretty much, there's a moratorium where it's closed off because the cleanup is essentially still going on. So you had, it contaminated beaches, wildlife, estuaries. So all these places for the reproduction of fish, shellfish, and just the magnitude of this was 20 times larger than that of the Exxon Valdez. So... That leads us to oil tanker spills. So they can leak from platforms, but then we 
also re- oil ends up in the water through these tanker spills. And in regards to the 89 spill of the Exxon Valdez, you have 11 million gallons of water, or I'm sorry, oil just being dumped or leaked into the ocean. And it's spread across the surface over several com- uh, kilometers of ocean and coastline. And by looking at this, you had 250,000 seabirds killed, 2,800 otters, 300 seals, 22 killer whales. And this cleanup has been going on for two decades. And to look at this graphic is great because you can see the timeline. I mean, these changes don't happen overnight. You have a spill. And for the ecosystem to bounce back, we're knocking on 30 years right now. And it's still, I mean, you have killer whale, killer whale habitats, herring that is still not bounced back. So these things happen and their effects go on for many, many years. Believe it or not, most of the oil that ends up in our ocean actually happens naturally. You have these small fissures or cracks in the ocean floor. There are oil oil reserves down there, and they will leak out, and they'll, again, it happens, and it is the most abundant, looking at this chart, natural seeps either nat- off the coast of North America and worldwide, are the main reason for oil oil contamination in the ocean. So uh, probably threw you a curveball there. You didn't see that coming, but something interesting. So you have the natural seeps adding to the amount humans are adding to the ocean. So that gives you an idea of how much or where that oil is coming from. All right, so what can we do? So how can we clean these up? They're going to happen, unfortunately, and if they happen, we want to be able to contain it and clean it as fast as possible with limited effects on the environment. So there's a few things. We can start with booms. Booms are effective because, as I'm sure you all know, if you've looked at uh, maybe Italian salad dressing, if it sits in your fridge, the oil sits on top, the water's down below. So what we'll do with booms is when oil spills in the ocean, um, the oil floating on the surface of the open ocean, what we can do is we can contain the oil in an area and then suck it off the surface of the water. So what these containment booms do, they consist of these plastic barriers and what will happen is these will float but these plastic barriers are actually extending down into the water for about several meters. So these plastic walls keep the floating oil from spreading further and once we have that oil contained, we have boats come over with vacuums and we literally suck it off the surface. Unfortunately, in shallow areas and along coastlines, we'll use absorbent materials are also used to suck up the spills. So you can see this guy, um, the absorbent material here, that white stuff, because it already made it to the shore. So the goal of booms is to contain it so it doesn't end up on the shore. The other thing we can do, a second approach is to treat oil floating on the surface is to apply chemicals. And what these do is these help break up and disperse the oil before it hits the shoreline and causes even more damage to coastal ecosystems. So although the dispersants can be effective, they can also be toxic to marine life. So going back to those inert ingredients we talked about this chapter, you know, yes, these chemicals break up the oil, but they also have effects on marine life. So right now, current research is examining ways to make chemical dispersants dispersants more environmentally friendly. The other crazy thing that we can do, a third approach, is genetically engineering bacteria. So several years ago, actually, scientists discovered a bacterium that obtained its energy by consuming oil emerging from natural seeps. So again, you have these natural seeps that have happened before humans even showed up on the scene. Uh, Life evolved and bacteria evolved to, there's a certain bacteria that will break it up. They use it for food. So these bacteria are very rare in the ocean, but we're very abundant in areas where oil spills or seeps occurred. So what scientists are currently trying to determine are the genes that take, or the genes from the bacteria that give it the ability to consume oil and insert copies of these genes in a genetically modified bacteria to consume oil spills um, when they occur. So here you can see the same idea as the chemicals. The plane will dump it over the oil. These bacteria will consume. And they do quite a few things. And there's actually many different types of uh, bacteria. And certain ones will break up the uh, hydrocarbons. Certain ones will worry about carbon dioxide. So it's very interesting. And hopefully, um, as technology and science continue to improve upon themselves, we can find more effective ways. So that is your quick, easy lecture on oil spills. Uh, As always, I'm here for you if you need anything. See ya.